Hi and welcome to another tutorial by ITC Computer and IT Solutions in Austin, Texas. My name is Eric and today's tutorial is going to be on getting started with an Apple Mac computer. So let's begin. Now I'm assuming that you're the user that's coming from Windows, or you're coming from a Windows environment, you're so used to Windows, you're just getting started with Mac, you're excited, you're eager, you're ready to learn, but you know nothing about Mac. So this is going to go over the very basics of just getting started and getting to learn the new operating system you're on. So let's begin. Now, once you've set up your computer and you've gone through the whole beginning setup process of taking it out of the box and setting up that beginning user and um, setting the time and date preferences and just logging in with your account ID, with your Apple ID, once you're past all that, you're going to see your new desktop wallpaper and your new computer. Now, um, the first thing I want to show you is how to create a user. Now I just created a use I just created a video on Han specifically user accounts, user management, and I got more in, into into detail as to uh, how to use the user management within Mac. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to briefly touch the user accounts and user groups so you can see how to create a new user. So the first thing you want to do anytime you want to do anything in a Mac that has to do with um, this kind of uh, uh, this kind of work, um, similar to a Windows environment like Control Panel, in a Mac, Control Panel is equal to System Preferences. So, how do we get to System Preferences? Now, there's two ways we can do it. We can either one search for System Preferences. If we go to the top right of our screen and click on the little search icon, I can type in System Preferences, and you can see it populate right here. Or I can go to the top left, click on the Apple icon, select System Preferences from there too. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now, once I select System Preferences, under the System heading, select Users and Groups. Now, in Users and Groups, if you want to add a new user, you would first have to unlock that um, capability. Uh, for security purposes, there's a locking and lock. Fe there's a lock and unlock feature within Mac that kind of says, "Are you sure you want to access this part of your operating system?" It's more of a security safety feature, in my opinion. It can be a little annoying, but once you unlock it, you're not going to see the problem again. So, in order to add a new user, you first have to unlock the capability to do so. So just go ahead and click on the lock here on the bottom left, and it's going to ask you for a password. Now this is the password to the user account you set up when you first set up this computer. So now I've logged in and I've authenticated, so now it knows I am who I am, and I'm going to create a new user. Now to create that new user, you want to just click on the plus icon here at the bottom left. And the new account is going to be a standard account. Full name will be whatever I make up. The password I'll just put as password. Of course, yours will be different. And and just hit create user. And I'm done. If I want to edit that user, maybe change that user's icon, I would just select on the icon and choose, let's say, the flower or the penguin. If I wanted to attach an Apple ID to that user for Apple's cloud services, I would just hit set and type in my Apple ID. Or if I don't have an Apple ID, I would simply just create an Apple ID here. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. OK, so we've created a user. Now, that's not all you want to do. This is just the beginning steps. You're not going to be the only person using this computer. If you're not, then I would suggest creating a standard user in the event that someone else wants to borrow your computer or use your computer. Let's say it's a family computer. Now, the next thing I'll show you how to do is let's say we want to set some basic preferences. Now, I'm just going to go back the top left, get out of users and groups, and just hit the back arrow. So you can see under the first heading, personal, we have some general, 
um, features, desktop and screensaver, the dock, mission control, language and text, security and privacy, spotlight, and notifications. Now, I'm not going to get too in-depth into these. I'll probably have a new video series coming out here soon going over complete Mac basics, Apple basics. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the very basics, the essentials to just getting to know your new Mac and setting some basic features. So under the general heading, I'm sorry, the general general icon, I'm sorry, you can set a different color for the appearance. So you can go with either graphite or blue. The highlight color can change here as well. You can set to show scroll bars or click on the scroll bar to do X. Um, recent items, you can list how many recent items you want to show up. And that's pretty much it sidebar icon size small medium large guys this is really just going to take you some time just just kind of playing around in here to see how you want your mac to look and feel so i'm just going to go ahead and click back desktop and screen saver now this is a cool one i always spend a lot of time doing this anytime i buy a new computer i'm always looking for the new wallpaper or desktops that come with that computer. I don't know, it's just something I've always done since Windows 98 SE. I've always seen the new operating system and, and just looking to see what they've added and what cool wallpapers they've added. Now you can go online and get, you know, wallpapers anywhere. But here's a few from um, Mountain Lion OS X. To change the wallpaper, all I'm doing is just selecting that wallpaper very simple here's a neat one and let's try a couple more so i'm just basically changing the wallpaper if i want to add a screensaver now a screensaver is that thing that will if you're if you step away from your computer you want something to kind of um lock the screen or or show up on the screen uh, just kind of keeps the computer busy and it doesn't burn an image on the actual screen itself. If I click on screensaver, here's where I can add a screensaver. One of the screensavers I use all the time is, is really neat from um, Apple, which is called Word of the Day. Looks pretty neat. My MacBook sits on my desk pretty much all day, so if I happen to look at my MacBook while my screensaver's up, I learn a new word. How cool is that? So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if this screen capture is working properly, you can see the um, screensaver here showing the word of the day and today's time. It is 2.33 in the morning. Wow, I need to get to bed. But here you go. So I'm just going to select that screensaver. I can have the screensaver start after 30 minutes, one hour, one minute, whatever I wanted. I can have the screensaver show with a clock or without a clock. Going back to the system preferences, if I click on dock, that's that thing you see here in the bottom of my screen. Your dock is kind of like your start feature, your all programs or your important recent programs, the programs you use all the, the applications you use all the time. Now the dock are like your quick launch icons. Uh, I'm sorry, your quick launch application. Anything you want to get to right away, any applications you use all the time, you want to add to your dock. Now I'm going to show you how to customize the dock. Now I can change the dock size. I can set magnification. So if I hover over a specific application or an icon, it'll actually magnify so I can see what that looks like. I can set the size of the magnification or I can just set to not magnify at all, which is my, my favorite. The position on the screen, I like to have my dock at the bottom of the screen. It's just, again, user preference. If you'd like, you can see that on the left hand side. Um, maybe not. Here it is. Right hand side, left hand side, or at the bottom. Minimize windows using scale effect. I can show you what that looks like. This is the scale effect. 
and this is the genie effect. Again, user preference. I prefer the scale effect, so I use just that. And here's a few other options. Double click a Windows title bar to minimize, minimize Windows and application icon, animate opening applications. These are all features or these are all things that it's just going to take some time for you to read and see what you want, again, your Mac to look and feel like. So I'm just going to go back to the system preferences page here. Mission control is very interesting, although I will not get into it in this uh, tutorial. It is just too much to cover. Language and text kind of says it all. If you want to set the specific language and text of your computer, you would do it in here. Security and privacy. If that's something where you want to go to the firewall and edit that or add privacy settings or click on the general tab and you can change a password or have your computer ask you for a password whenever it goes to sleep, you can set those uh, settings here. Spotlight, I will not go over. And notifications is probably one that you will either get to love or hate later on in the future. Anytime an application wants to warn you or show you or tell you something, it'll have this little pop-up at the bottom right or top right of your screen. That's these alerts you're seeing here. If I have reminders, I want to set to either none, banners, or alerts. But again, that's something that you guys will eventually come across once you start seeing those alerts, and they'll either you'll love them or they'll annoy the heck out of you, and you'll want to get rid of them. So under notifications is where you'll set that. Under hardware, you can see where it has CD and DVDs. You can click on display to add an additional display, or you can set the brightness or resolution of your, of your display. Energy saver is does just that. If you want your computer to go to sleep, you can set it to go to sleep here. If you want your display to go to sleep, you can set it to go to sleep here in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour. It's up to you. Wake for network access. That's if you want your computer to wake up if it is um, a network signal is sent to it. Put hard disk to sleep when possible. That's if your computer is kind of sitting idle for quite some time or if the screen's closed, the hard disk will spin down and eventually stop so it's not eating away at precious battery um, resources, power resources. Here you can also set a schedule for your computer to start and wake up. That's convenient for people that have working hours and don't want to be at the computer all day every day. I'm going to go back to the system preferences now. Under keyboard, here's where you can set your keyboard shortcuts. You can set any other features related to your keyboard here. If you click on mouse, you can see where you can set the tracking speed, the double click speed, you can set the scroll speed. You can also set the type of um, what you want your mouse buttons to do. This is just my mouse, you probably have a separate mouse or you're using the touchpad, that's fine. Going back to system preferences now, you can see the trackpad right here. Now. I'm not going to get too much into detail with the trackpad because there's so much you can do, but if you want to enable all the features that came with your <clears throat> Apple MacBook or uh, that came with your Apple computer, I would say spend a little time in trackpad because there's so much you can do as seen here in the display with your trackpad. You have the two click, the three click, the three finger swipe, four, swing, four finger swipe. There's just so much you can do with your Mac. Um, trackpad and you can see that here. Going back to system preferences, here's print and scan. If you want to add a printer to print to, you would do it in here. I have a tutorial that I went over and you guys can look at that video to see how that's done. The sound preferences, if you click on that sound icon, you can set them here. Under internet and wireless, if you have an iCloud account, you can set that iCloud account right here, what you want that iCloud account to back up and do for you. 
mail contacts and calendars if you have accounts that you want to set up and configure with this computer you can do that here under network you can set your network adapter settings under Wi-Fi Ethernet whatever you're using to connect to your network um, your personal home or work public network under Bluetooth if you're using a Bluetooth enabled device you would add that device here set up and configure that device under Bluetooth under sharing you can set what you want to share to other people on your network if your Mac is discoverable to the network people would be able to share these specific things so if you had um, another Mac on the network that uh, you wanted to share your printer to you would just select printer sharing going back to system preferences under the system tab we've already gone over, gone over users and groups under parental controls this is extremely a neat feature I have a tutorial that specifically goes over user management and we cover quite a bit on parental controls if you click on parental controls you can select the user and enable parental controls for that user you can set what kind of parental controls you want to set for that user It'll just take some time for you to look through here, dig around, and do some reading. But again, it's very simple. If you want to cover more on parental controls, check out my other video. I believe that video is called uh, Users Accounts or User Account Management in a MacBook. Going back to System Preferences, you can set the date and time under this icon here. Select your time zone wherever you're located and change your clock settings here to either the digital or the analog. I prefer the digital. Software updates, that's if you want to check for current updates on your MacBook. Dictation and speech is if you want to set the settings for the microphones on your computer or if you want to set up any kind of text-to-speech or have your Mac read to you for um, visually impaired people uh, you can set those features here under dictation and speech time machine is max um, all all in one complete backup of your computer it's extremely interesting I have a video on that, that specifically covers time machine backup I show you how to configure it and set it up in that video I suggest if you're interested in, in a, um, a backup solution for your Mac check out that video I won't go over, go over it here, but this is where you would set Time Machine Backup up. Under Accessibility, again, for visual, um, visually impaired or for um, uh, people that are hearing impaired, you can set those settings up here. Startup Disk is the disk you want your computer to start up with select the system you want to use to start up your computer you can change those settings here if you're not familiar with this or if you're a beginner user beginner user don't even bother showing up in here and anything under the other heading is in my case just flash player so in this tutorial we cover the very basics to getting started with your mac i show you um, how to get around in system preferences, what each icon means. At this point, it's going to take you just some time to get to know your new operating system. Drive around a little bit. You're not going to break anything. Go to system preferences, click around, set your wallpaper, add a user, play around with your dock, change these settings because getting to know the operating system is going to make it make so much more sense doing it this way than in the future kind of looking up and researching and trying to figure these things out the hard way. If you guys have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comment section of youtube.com forward slash IT conflict. Check us out on Facebook. Our Facebook address is facebook.com forward slash IT conflict. Follow us on Twitter. We're at IT Conflict, and um, you can check us out on our website at www.itconflict.com. Again, my name is Eric with ITC Austin, and we provide computer and IT solutions. Thanks for watching.